Well, oh, you, thank you, everybody. Thank you so much. You're That's right. Me. We've done it. Thank you, everybody. Oh, you did it. Oh, you're too kind. You're too kind. Thank you. Excellent thank you, everybody. Excellent stuff. All right, I'll let you off. Thank you. I'll let you off. Well, thank you. Too much. Too much. Hey guys, I'm Aussie Villain and welcome back to Queen of the South. It's a summer transfer special today as we move from season 10 into season 11 and let's just bathe in the glory one more time as we are Europa League champions. Oh, it sounds good, doesn't it? But uh, let's go and have a quick look at what is coming up this episode. Now, I said we know what's happening with a few people and the main person that we know is coming in is Makriev. He has got his work permit. He's been away at Benfica. And to be fair, he's done a really, really good job while he's been on loan. You can see there, uh, nine games in the league, three goals, three man of the match awards, averaging 7.49 in Portug uh, Portugal's top flight. He also scored a goal in the Champions League. Benfica was still in that as well. So I'm I'm very, very excited to get him in. And that'll give us then who's a right-footed player. So ideally, we'll have a, a really good right-footed winger. And uh, that would free up Thomas Boll to play more in the middle. And then we would have um, uh, Petr Arvik to play down the left-hand side. All, all three of them really, really good dribblers, even as a middle three. Just get them running at defences. That could cause absolute havoc uh, at the back. Now, in terms of a budget for what we have to work with today, 16 million is what we have right now. I'm hoping that'll go up. You can see our overall balance is not great. And... Well, hopefully, again, that's going to go up. But we did spend $40 million last season. We made a loss, basically, of the Bukiano transfer money. So we'll see what happens. It's going to be an interesting summer. So let's get to it and, uh, yeah, see where we go. All right, so who should we sell this summer? Diaz, obviously. Hello? Oh, your highness, to what do I owe this honor, ma'am? The stadium got approved. Well, that is excellent news. Excellent news. So what's it called? The Allen Ball Stadium, you're joking. What the f***? I just want you the f***ing Europa League. So we are getting a new stadium, and it's not called the Aussie Villain Arena. I am beyond annoyed at that. <laughs> really, really am. Uh, but you can see there that we've announced we've got planning permission. It's going to cost uh, $26.5 million, though it will be offset by a million that we will receive for selling Palmerston Park. I mean, I'm assuming that's just the land and maybe some spare timber. And uh, the board are delighted to announce that uh, the project will be uh, finished without having secured any uh, external funding. So basically we're paying for it. Uh, an additional uh, funding for the project will be secured by stadium sponsorship worth 13.25 million. So it's going to be completed uh, two years. It's going to take to build. So we'll have it in two years time, basically. Chaz Hogan, Australian journalist, and there are jubilant scenes here in Dumfries as uh, news has broken that Marco Diaz will be leaving Queen of the South. Now, a deal believed to have been struck with Mexican size Cruz Azul has been finalised. So some excellent news. Marco Diaz has left the club. He will miss chances for us no more. 8.5 million we got for him. Now, unfortunately... I mean, unfortunately, he's a very good player attribute-wise. He just didn't ever work for us at all. We've made a loss on him. So we bought him for 10.5. We sold him for 8.5. Uh, basic maths will tell me that's a £2 million loss. And I think we've just, got to, we've just got to take it on the chin. He was on 25 grand a week, so we'll free up that money as well. And uh, yeah, we'll just uh, take that as a lesson learned. He was not to be Conan Ong's replacement. And we've had another departure. This time it is Bruno. 11 million off to Norwich. He goes, he just wasn't the player, didn't develop into the player that is going to replace Bayless. He's basically, uh, he's not even as good as Bayless, to be honest. So I'm okay with getting 11 million for him. You can see he's already worth more. But I get the feeling he's one of those players that maybe is never quite as good as, as you think he's going to be for you. And, uh, well, we've doubled our money on him. So... That's not a bad thing, is it? So let me know what you think. Is it right to sell Bruno? I think he and Diaz, which is why I've sold them, were sort of the two that were just on the outside looking in a little bit. So we might as well get rid of them and reinvest that money. We have breaking news this evening out of Queen of the South as the club agreed to sell Guilhermo Santos to Sheffield United for £30 million. Now, club manager Ozzy Villan had this to say just moments ago. 
Look, I didn't want to sell him. I really didn't. But uh, he only had a year left on his contract and the bastard wouldn't even negotiate a new one. All right, so this is a setback. Santos has left the club. He's gone to Sheffield United, 30 million pound. I did not want to do this. He was brilliant for us last season, but contract was up at the end of the year. He was refusing to even negotiate a new one. So, you know, I wasn't, I just, I wasn't willing to risk uh, having to then replace him this time next year with, with no money to do so. So it's 30 million. It's almost, I mean, we signed him for 4.3. And as, as I say, not ideal, but we've got a decent fee for him. And now we need to go and find a player that can go in there and and, uh, and do a good job, just like he did. We do have Bermudez. We've extended his contract. He, of course, is a club trained player. But uh, Santos, we do not have any more. OK, a few things to catch you up on. The first thing is that Bermudez is now an international. And I feel like he's been with us for so long. He's, he's, he's kind of one of our own. And so it's good to see it's good to see him finally at the age of 24 getting a cap for Uruguay. And with the sale of Santos, I mean, he could be an even more important player for us next season. Though his new contract has him as a squad player. So there's less pressure to actually go and uh, and play him. But uh, what we came back for is the European things. Now, uh, competition rankings, Scotland has remained in the seventh position, the Scottish Premiership, that is. We have rose up the uh, European club rankings. We are at five places to 25th. So, I mean, that's almost getting into the European elite club status, isn't it? Uh, homegrown players, uh, we can see here, we've got Bermudez, Walker, uh, Irving, Eddie Johnson, Turpy, Ayrton is a homegrown player as well. And the rest of them there, Muros and Leighton, would uh, possibly first team players. And then we're sort of not really, there's nobody else there that's particularly first team. Wow, we do have quite a few players that are eligible though, aren't we? So we're going to we're gonna be able to register close to a full squad. And of course, we, we figured this out last episode. We have gained a place in the Champions League. Scotland has for the next three years. We've overtaken Portugal for sixth. So this time next season, there will be three Scottish teams lining up in the Champions League. Wait, go find me a number 10, will you, mate? Hello? Tottenham, what do you want? You heard Hanson has a release fee. No, he doesn't. So what if I am lying to you? Oh, come on, you don't want to trigger it. Come on, Spurs, don't be dicks. So Spurs have been dicks. They have triggered the Jan Hansen release fee. They've signed him for 18.75 million. We completely had our hands tied by this one. He's just good, isn't he? Uh, we, he wasn't going to sign for us without that release fee. And he wasn't negotiating a new contract to try and get rid of it. So there, there was literally nothing I could do. We wouldn't have got him in the first place without the release fee. So... Yeah, there we go. We had him for two seasons. We've made a small profit on him, so it's not the end of the world. But now we've got to go and find ourselves another left back. And I mean, the issue that we have here is it's sort of the the problem with winning something. We're getting kind of picked apart a little bit here, aren't we? But anyway, it's more money to spend. We'll see if we can go and spend it. In terms of the finances, we've got 82 million that we can spend now. Why is it that high? I don't think it was that high before. We haven't sold anybody for that big of money, have we? I suppose we have sold quite a few players for some money. Anyway, we've got money to spend. We just need to find players that'll uh, that'll come to us. So we have a new scout. You may have heard of him. Jose Mourinho. Three and a half grand a week. And uh, yeah, he's going to be a scout. Apparently he has no interest in being a manager anymore. So yeah, I mean, I'd had take him as the assistant. But uh, as a scout, we'll take him. So this is something to look forward to. We will, of course, be in the Super Cup against uh, Champions League champions uh, Chelsea. So it'll be tough. We've played them before in the Champions League group stages, so it's not like they're going to be completely unfamiliar, but it's always tough for the Europa League winner to beat the Champions League winner. But we'll give it our best shake, and uh, we'll see how we go. Finally, we have some good news. We have signed another left back, Juan Manuel Rojas from River Plate for uh, 6.5 million. He's signing as a regular starter on 12 grand a week. We'll have a look at him in just a second here. Uh, I do just want to. He's not. He's not Hanson. I know that. Uh, but he was the best we could do. He was the best we could do, and I think he will be okay. The jumping reach thing is a little bit of a concern, but he's not too bad getting forward. His decision-making and determination is both really good, so that should, uh, I'm hoping anyway, decision-making will help make up a little bit for maybe uh, not the best defensive stats, but 
we'll see. There's a room to the room to improve, though, at 21. There maybe is limited uh, scope for that. But he's played more or less two seasons for River Plate and uh, done okay. So we'll just keep our fingers crossed. And between him and Muros, hopefully we will have uh, left backs that can uh, that can compete at the top level. Okay, we have another signing. Alfredo Torres is his name. 8.25 million from Real Vallecano. He is obviously Spanish. Uh, you can see we have signed him as a squad player on almost 17 grand a week with all the other ins and outs of the contract there. Let's have a look at him. This is kind of a replacement for, Tor uh, for Santos, but not really it's sort of we're starting again, basically, and trying to create a good player uh, through experience. He's got good vision, good passing, techniques not bad, good first touch. So the, the basics are there. He's a committed attacking uh, midfielder, as you can see. Good work rate as well and teamwork. So I think sticking him forward in this number 10 role, not in the big games in Europe, but I think that, uh, you know, league games and, and maybe some other games in Europe, that he... he I think he'll do okay. I think he'll do okay, but we are sort of as a bit of a backward step study again. We can, in terms of developing a player, uh, we can see here he had uh, a good season in Liga Two, La Liga Two last season. Forty-two games, ten goals, twelve assists. So, th th you know that bodes well if he's doing that for his sort of seventeen, eighteen. That he there's a, that suggests he's going to be able to do okay, and he's played uh, you know two or two and a bit seasons of uh, of La Liga Two football. So. He's uh, he's played in the first team before, and I'm hopeful that he's going to come in. And like I say, not he's not going to he's not going to replace Santos directly immediately, but maybe a season or two down the line, he'll be at that level. All right, we have another signing, and this time it is a loanee from Manchester United, Slovenian striker Marco Stanzic. Uh, we are paying 150 grand a month in a transfer, f uh, well, a loan fee, I should say, and then 22 grand a week for his wages. Uh, let's have a look at him. It says he's a, he's a wonder kid. He's a striker. He's also, well, he can play fairly well anywhere across the front three, maybe not as an out-and-out number 10. But th the reason I've signed this guy and what I like about him is his height. Uh, he, he's good physically just generally all around, but he does have good height and he's a good header of the ball. So if we're going to maybe play with wingers at times this season, I think sticking him up front as the lone striker, we could do a lot worse than that and then just get that, that height, that heading ability and a uh, little bit of pace he has as well. He should be able to get himself into some good position. So finishing and composure aren't the strongest, neither is off the ball movement but he can take a decent free kick as well. I think he could work out to be to be okay for us. And uh, we can see here that, well, he hasn't played much for Manchester United, but let's hope that uh, he can add to his 15 goals he has so far in his career. And uh, yeah, let me know what you think of him. I think he's just a good, a good solid depth signing. I don't, I don't see too many downsides to it. All right, well, this is a spinner in the works of preseason. Uh, July 19th, and Omar Bermudez has done his cruciate ligament seven to eight months. And that leaves a little bit of a hole in the number 10 place on the field. It also, of course, means he's out of at least the group stage of the Champions League. He's a club-trained player, and that's going to leave a potentially a registration hole as well. So... Yeah, that is not the season that we sold Santos, the injury that we needed. All right, more bad news. We've got another injury, not as serious, but it's Mark Murosh, our left back, and he's out five to six weeks. I was really hoping that wouldn't happen. <laughs> uh, we do, of course, have a uh, have a replacement or, or, or a backup in, for Ro in the shape of Rojas, but we're going to need to get somebody in, I think, because a month, just over a month of talking early September... Maybe we could just about get by using just Rios, uh, uh, Rio, Rio, Rojas, I should say, but I don't think I want to do that. Ah, why injuries, injuries, injuries. Hello, Manchester United. It's Aussie Villain. Yeah, look, I've broken my left back just until January. Thank you. So there we go. Hopefully, left back problem solved. We've gone back to Manchester United, loaned another player in Jabril Campo. He's a 20 year old wonder kid. Of course, he is. What else do I sign? We've only got him until the next transfer window, so till January, because that's as long as we're going to need him for. And let's have a quick look at him. He's a very defensively minded centre back. Uh, centre back, uh, left back. He can also play centre back, and. Yeah, I mean, he might he might prove to have been useful to keep beyond uh, beyond January, but ultimately he's here to do a job uh, almost in the first few weeks of the season, and then we can just we can just let him let him 
play whenever we might need him if we get more injuries or tiredness or whatever. But yeah, I think that's uh, that's as good as we could have done for uh, for a backup left back for a couple of months. All right, we are at game day of the first game of the season. We are away to Rangers. So that's an interesting game to start the season with. Uh, but we have got one more signing across the road. Uh, it is across the line, I should say, Clay. We'll go with that. An 18-year-old Brazilian. Now, we signed in from Pacos Ferreira in Portugal. 750 up front, an extra million if he pay, uh, plays 50 games, scores 50 goals. B minus, according to the fans, he's come in as a breakthrough prospect on five grand a week. You can see the other ins and outs of his contract there. Now, I'm not really sure where this guy came from, but the scouts picked him up. And he has a lot of the key attributes... Uh, that you'd want a striker to have. So good finishing, good composure, good flair, good off the ball movement. He's got a good pass on him as well. He's got good technique and he's, you know, his strength, he's got balance. And he's only 18, so obviously there's room for him to develop. He just, yeah, it, it, scouts don't love him, but he just seems to have everything that he would need. So we'll see what happens with him. He's been in Portugal there, you can see in there, was that their second division? Or is that their top flight? Liga Portugal B win. Maybe that must be the top flight. Got nine goals in the top flight there last season or two seasons ago, whenever it was. Last season. So yeah, we'll just kind of see what happens with him. Uh, you know, he's not going to expect to play, and we'll yeah, we'll just kind of see, as I say, see what happens. It's not a big financial risk for us, really. So let's have a look and see uh, exactly what has happened so far this window and well not too much in terms of the ends but we didn't need to do that much I don't think it was more just about replacing players that left so uh, we've got Rojas in at left back and then we've got uh, Torres in to replace Santos and then we've got a couple of loanees and and this Klee guy and we'll see, see how he goes uh, in terms of the outs you can see a lot of youngsters have gone out on loan uh, the only permanent ones that we've lost is Jock Smart came through the academy we I tried him in the first team he was never going to really make it so he's gone off to Hamilton and the other one is goalkeeper John Warwick who's gone off to Millwall um so they have both uh, they've both left the club uh, more permanent uh, on a more permanent basis and 98 million we made in the transfer market last season uh, of course the big uh, departures there were Bruno uh, who left for Norwich Santos who left for Sheffield United against what I ideally would have done but again a reminder his contract was up so we were potentially going to lose him for nothing uh and then diaz as well and hansen who we lost of course having his release fee triggered so it's been a difficult summer i would say rather than a good one but let's have a look and see what it's left us with and this is our team to start the year so if we look up front we've got johnny angus who has been mr reliable for the last few years we have the manchester united loanee stan Kitch, uh, who hopefully will do well eddie johnson of course is still around we also have selino who was proven himself to be a good goal scorer we have reese layton another one who is uh, who is doing well we've got clee who's just come in and a couple of others here as well um who could or could not do a job and of course thomas bowl can play up front if we go back to number 10 obviously bermudez is going to be missing for most of the season with his uh, cruciate ligament thomas bowl i think is someone i'm going to look to use as the number 10 uh sort of to replace Santos in the lineup and then if we have uh, say Torres replacing uh, Bermudez and then hopefully we've got enough there between those two to play the games and uh, the youngster Graham Johnson he came through last year's youth intake we've got him in the senior squad just uh, you know to get the training and the mentoring and stuff and if he's good enough for a game or two here and there then off the bench let's give it to him uh, over on the right hand side Thomas Bowl obviously can play the position uh, eddie johnson can do a decent job out there uh, arvid can do a decent job out there but actually the main man we've got to play over on that side is still learning the position and it is makriev uh, he is potentially a very very good right-sided winger for us uh, over on the left uh, stankic obviously will play over here uh, arvid is possibly my main man and then of course we've got the youngster gary turpy as well who can uh, who can do a job for us when needed if we drop a little bit further back in midfield uh we've got lots and lots of good players here mihai uh we've got almarez now almarez you'll notice is unhappy because we rejected a bid from paris saint germain now the squad in dribs and drabs are taking his side on this thing it could be a problem I'm hoping not, and I'm hoping that uh, we'll be able to to keep him, but we'll see against Rangers if he's going to sulk or not, and if he's going to sulk, then it might be a case of 
potentially looking to cash in on him. Uh, Arvik, we know if we play with Mazellas, can play in midfield. Uh, Andy Irving, his contract is up at the end of this year. It might be the last year we see him, but we'll see because he, he is... Uh, he is a uh, club trail nation trained for a European squad. Rezaev is still around. I just love him. He's never leaving anywhere. Uh, we've, of course, got Mashagi, uh, who's a very good defensive midfielder for us. Thomas Boll, we've seen, can play back here. Tom Bayless, potentially his last season for us. His contract is up, though, if he plays 15 games, uh, he will have a year's extension, which we will almost certainly do. Torres can play a little bit further back here, as Ken Johnson, who we've just seen. Defensively, we've got uh, we've got our four main guys in Bukiano, in Jesus Torres, in club captain for again this season, Andy Walker, and of course we've got Bubba Adu. Up until January, we've got Campo, who can play as a centre-back, and then we've got, among other youngsters, Craig McNabb, who is uh, sort of the first cab off the rank in terms of youngsters coming through. So again, games off the bench, we'll try and give him some. Uh, right back, we've got two very, very good ones in Ayrton and in uh, Amoruso. So they're both back for another year, although Amoruso has had a lot of interest in him. And Rezaev can play as sort of the third choice right back for us. Uh, over on the left-hand side, Muros, who was injured, of course, for the first few weeks. Then we've got two new boys, Rojas. Hopefully he will do a job for us. And Campo, who we've just seen, is in until January. Goalkeeper, I was looking to see if I could find anybody better than Bursic, and the short answer was no, I couldn't, not really. Um, there might be guys that are marginally better in certain areas, but the distribution was just not good compared to, to Bursic. So he's still the best man we have for the job, and the backup is Perez. It's his last year of his contract as well. I don't think we'll keep him, but we'll, we'll see. We'll see how he goes. Uh, he's obviously not developed because he's been our backup as a young keeper. We've kind of held him back a little bit on that front. So we'll see what happens. But we are going to have to make decisions about goalkeepers sooner rather than later. So that's it for today. If you have enjoyed that, make sure you hit thumbs up. You can see preseason has gone very well, including a win at Barcelona. Uh, but yeah, yeah, if you enjoyed that thumbs up, subscribe if you're new. Let me know how you think the summer's gone. It's, as I said, been difficult. And uh, if we have a look at the finances, there is still money to spend. So... Yeah, let me know what you guys would like to see. I know you always say you'd like to see like a, a marquee striker. They're expensive. Their transfer fee and salaries are very hard to, to get in. But uh, as ever, we will always keep looking. So I'll see you next time as we get the season underway. It'll be Rangers in the league. And then we'll have the Super Cup against Chelsea. Take care.